So, all right, guys, so let's kick it off. Thank you so much for joining us for another live session. Um, it is my pleasure to have uh, some of the best artists in the industry uh, for this session. Um, we're really lucky to have the character arts team from Uncharted 4. So um, the way the session is going to work, guys, it's uh, for those of you guys who've done this before, it's pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to just go through this. It's like um, if you have any questions, um, definitely feel free to, to post them, but there is a good chance we might not get to them um, because we already have like a list of about 100 questions uh, that everybody has asked beforehand. And so we're going to prioritize them first. Uh, and then if we have time, um, we'll try to touch base with everything else. So, um, but this is going to be a great session. Um, once again, I'd like to thank, you know, uh, the guys for making it here. Um, Adam, Colin, Corey, Frank, Glauco, thank you guys so much uh, for just taking time out of your schedule. I know with the, la with the crunch and getting this game out, you guys are pretty exhausted. So, you know, we thank you a great deal. So, um, and definitely like to thank Frank... <laughs> Uh, for uh, it's it's 3 a.m. over there right now in Taiwan, and Frank is uh, you know um, gracious enough to do this with us. So Frank, thank you so much. I know uh, you haven't been sleeping much, so much appreciated. <laughs> so, so all right, so the way it's going to work, guys, um, and, and also before I forget, it's like you know, I like to also just kind of sh well, actually, Frank will probably just shout out the rest of his team. I know there's a couple of people who weren't able to make it. So once Frank starts off, whatever, he can shout out, you know, some of the, the other team members uh, that weren't able to make it for the session. So the way it's going to work, guys, is we'll just start off where everybody kind of introduce themselves and also what they worked on uh, on the game, some of the characters and some of the amazing assets they worked on. And then from that point, we're just going to open it up to um, a Q&A session, uh, which we've already had a bunch of questions, as I said, from the audience beforehand that I'm going to be feeding to, um, to, to the team. All right, and then we're gonna we're gonna cap it at that. So uh, we're looking at about an hour to an hour and a half uh, in terms of the full session. So mm -hmm. definitely uh, sit sit tight and prepare to be blown away. All right. So we'll kick it off with Frank. If you could just introduce yourself and show us some of the amazing stuff that you worked on. Okay. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Frank Zen. Uh, I'm the lead character artist uh, in Naughty Dog. Uh, we just finished on Charter Four. Um, of course, all the, the credit goes to the whole company and all the characters goes to our character team. Here we have me, Colin, Adam, Bianghua, Yibing, uh, Corey, Glauco, who so, else? So and Jae Hoon. Jae Hoon, yes. <laughs> That's it, right? Did I miss anyone? Adam Scott. Scott. Adam Scott. No, I, oh yeah, and the yeah, other Adam, Adam Scott. All right. <clears throat> okay, so there's some characters that I work on. Uh, besides Drake, I work on Sully. I work on uh, Nadine. I also work on um, Young Drake, um, Prison Drake, and finally uh, the daughter. Um, so I will be talking a little bit about uh, my responsibility on Uncharted 4, and I will let everyone else introduce themselves and um, start from there. So basically... Um, so I guess we could... Uh, um, do you want to continue, Frank, or do you want to just send it off to Adam? <laughs> uh, all right. Go ahead, Adam. All right. Thanks, Frank. No problem. Uh, my name is Adam Scott, originally from Vancouver. Uh, I worked on a, a whole bunch of different assets for Uncharted. So um, Hector Alcazar, cinematic head in the in the prison. Jumped around different NPCs, uh, different crowd scenes. Uh, did the, t the title screen skeleton. Um, are they seeing my screen right now? Yep. Yep. We can see yeah. it. So yeah, a bunch of different heads. Uh, a little bit of hair stuff. Um, yeah, so this is kind of a big mix. Been a Naughty Dog for about three and a half years. Yeah, that's about it. Cool. All right, Colin? Yo. Um, can everyone see my screen? 
Yep, we can see your screen. Um, hey, my name is Colin, uh, senior character artist at Naughty Dog. Uh, worked on Sam and uh, Young Sam. And, is his uh, voice breaking up, or is it just me? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting that. I'm getting that as well. We're getting the robot voice. Not again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you want to just go through that, you know, do what you did yesterday, uh, Colin, and we'll just go on it, Corey and the rest of the guys, and then we'll come back when you're on. Okay. All right, buddy. All right, All right. Corey, show's yours. Okay. Uh, yeah, my name is Corey Johnson. Um, I've been at Night Dog about seven and a half years. Uh, I started on Uncharted 2 uh, in, like, a junior role and been there ever since. Um from Ohio, and yeah, I can show you some of the stuff that I worked on. It's supposed to be all single-player stuff first. Um, just some pirate captain stuff. Uh, it was mostly like high-res fixes and then uh, texturing, and yeah, these guys were interesting because we had to get them in quick, so it was a lot of uh, decimating, quick UV, and yeah, make that work. Skeletons, the heavy machine gunner. Um, worked closely with concept on this one. Um, going back and forth, figuring what'll work, what won't work, and then doing a lot of revisions once we uh, started getting it into 3D. Um, some in-game screenshots. Uh, worked on like random enemies and soldiers and crap and all that stuff. And then... Multiplayer, which was a bit more of my focus. Um, worked on Tenzin. Uh, it's pretty interesting pulling up his super old assets and then reworking them and bringing them up to uh, Uncharted 4 standard. Yeah. And then sidekicks. Those were a lot of work. Each sidekick, complete unique character that didn't really share much parts with uh, anything else in the game. <clears throat> yeah. But yeah, yeah. I mean, like a lot of the multiplayer stuff is uh, there's a lot of work that goes into it. That's like uh, behind the scenes. Yeah, cool. yeah. That's my, that's some of my stuff. All right, uh, Glauco. Yep. So my name is Glauco Longi. I'm a character artist at Naughty Dog, and I worked for probably one year and a half in this game. And here's some of the. I'm originally from Brazil, and this is some of the stuff that I did. So, some single player stuff. Let me just put this full screen. One statue for the E3 demo, which ended up being like on the game after that. Uh, awesome. So, I'm going to just cycle through all the images and uh, revamp version of Lazarevich for the multiplayer and some of his skins. Some. Sidekicks that I got to work with a lot of the team as well. Uh, some single player stuff. Some enemies. <clears throat> some a bunch of different heads and NPC heads. Uh, more heads. <laughs> Other multiplayer character. Ramses, uh, uh, some skeletons. Like Corey said, we had to work to help environment by the end of the project. Some more heads, more enemies, and some more sidekicks for multiplayer. Also, that's pretty much it. Cool. Awesome. Great stuff. All right, Colin. Yo, uh, can everyone hear me? Oh yeah, much yes. better. Now we're good. good. Now we got sexy Colin voice. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had a, a mode I could just turn on sexy Colin voice, but uh, yeah, it's always uh, on. Yeah, it's so always on. it's always on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, yeah, I mean, I, as I mentioned, I worked on Sam and um, other elements uh, in the game as well. But uh, here's some of that, those images. So. Um, just different ones taken from in the game and different moments in the game and stuff like that from cinematic and um, 
yeah, this this one particularly showed like the agent process and and uh, how we have to keep consistency and stuff with that. Uh, load no. Oh man, come on. <laughs> mm, it's not loading. Come on, Colin, you're just lying. It's all good. <laughs> okay. No pressure. <laughs> Gotta upgrade that PC, man. Come on. <laughs> it's, it's like loading it off my hard drive, my um, my thing in Meduzi. So, it, uh, yeah. Oh, are you are you doing? There you go. It's back. Yeah. yeah so just different images and um, younger Sam and you know this one. This one was a render that I did and um, up the head in zebra shots and yeah, yeah that's about it. So cool. All right, perfect. So, you know, on on the subject of you know just Nadine's hair and just the hair workflow you guys are doing in general. Um, so, how are you creating this? Are you using a software, um, you know, to 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 place the cards uh, to get that initial generation? Well, we do have uh, an in-house hair system that basically. So, there's a few ways that we can create um, the hair cards. One is by hand painting which you guys can see a lot of this kind of flying hair. They're just hand-painted. Um, the other one, which is created by, um, basically we have an in-house hair tool. Um, we can basically draw splines um, in Maya, like a flat. And then after that, um, after we, we draw all the, the splines, um, it bakes out all the maps for us, um, big out normal map, ID map, uh, color map as well. Um, there's a lot of people involving with this kind of creation uh, and giving feedback. Uh, basically, the whole character team and also our rigging team. Um, Tyler is the one who did this uh, tool, I believe. So yeah, we have a hair tool just in Naughty Dog that we can use to create this kind of hair. Oh, sure. We should clarify that it, the hair tool is is um, is more for texture creation, like of the hair strands, and not and not the actual cards themselves. Oh yeah, 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 not for yeah. the actual cards. So yeah, those are, yeah. Those are, so the I cards mean, is all basically hand placed. Yeah. Everyone. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was. Uh, yeah, that's what I was asking specifically. I'm sorry I didn't clarify that. So yeah, in terms of like you know just the initial generation of cards, so that's all hand. You know, that's all hand placed, correct? Yeah, it's hand placed, and you can see it's from like the very least one, and then keep going, keep adding, keep adding, keep adding until the end. So yeah, it's all hand placed. Cool. And how many cards? Um, I know you gave us the uh, the poly count roughly, but um, of thirteen thousand. But how many cards do you think um, that that you end up with at the end? That's it. That's that's the number. Oh no, um, thir thirteen thousand cards. No, it's thirty thousand <laughs> polys. Polys. I mean, how many like planes were you using? Like, you know, is that a hundred, two hundred? Like that, I that, that I don't know. It's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's perfectly. Yeah. Fine. You weren't you know. weren't keeping count. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I think Glauco knows. Yeah, <laughs> Glauco. How many? How many? How many? How many? Last time I count, uh -huh. it was like two thousand five hundred and thirty-three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> Glauco just has that's what he does he counts if, go, if anyone out there go over that budget the, the game engine just explodes pretty yeah. much Paul yeah. robot voice again oh no <laughs> <laughs> um, so Frank you know having so much experience you know and I know most of you guys have a lot of experience with hair I'll kind of just you know ask a couple of you know you guys to kind of chime in on this what is your best practice for creating hair that you found? I mean, if you're doing this all by hand, you know, it's a very meticulous, you know, involved process. Is there any little tips and tricks or workflows that you develop, uh, you know, that kind of help speed things up? Yes. Can anyone want to hear me? Go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sexy call. Go ahead. Back. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no. I know for me, uh, early on doing doing some hair stuff, one one thing that helped was to get all your textures laid out first and placed on the cards. And um, 
so you can easily pick which one you want to place at any given time. Um, also, one thing that I did was, it's weird, but I, well, I don't know if it's weird, but it's centering the pivot on the card and then putting the pivot at the at um, the the base of any card. So if you have a card going from top to bottom, I'll put the the uh, the pivot point at the bottom so that when you when you snap it to the head, it's just a matter of um, you know making the mesh live, the head mesh live, and then snapping directly to that. And it's easy to just quickly place the cards and rotate, and and it'll always rotate from the pivot of that. Um, that's just if you're doing it manually. If you guys have some hair tool out there that we don't know about, good, good for you. Guys. Yeah, please let us know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Adam? Any any tips as it relates to uh, you know generating uh, the hair? Yeah. Uh, I think I think don't feel don't feel bad about having to start from the beginning. Uh, hair is really tough because it's not like you can start with some broad shapes and then kind of keep refining and refining and then finally get it. And sometimes you have to redo your, your texture sheet or add new hairs so they don't fit in your UV uh, slot. So there's a lot of uh, kind of trial and error at the beginning until you get the, the general look that you're looking for. But sometimes you make some some transparency of your cards and you're using some way more than you're using other ones, but you need some space for some future ones. So it's just, I, I think just don't feel, uh, like don't start from starting from scratch again if you're going the wrong direction. Cool. Yeah, I would just like to add like the thickness of the hair strings are super important. So usually people miss that. So they do like for example a mustache with like super thin hairs or like super thick as well. So just pay attention to that kind of stuff. <clears throat> cool. Um, there's there's one kind of trick that I'm doing uh, for Nadine's hair. It's like I think plant it out first. It's one of the most important part. Um, how how do I do that? Basically, I I study all the references and kind of plan it out. Okay, so I have several. I need to have several this kind of different type of median um, median size of hair, and how many types that I need to have for the the big type of the hair, which is cover underneath Nadine's hair. And flying, flying hair, I need to have how many uh, variations? Like, if you can plan it this out first, uh, it will be way easier for you to do, like, um, layer by layer, step by step. Cool. No, that's great. Anything you'd like to add, Corey? Um, or is it pretty much covered? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that pretty much covers all of it. Um, I don't really have anything else to add for hair. No, no it's all good. Um, so, uh, was there, Frank? Was there a specific shader you guys utilize uh, for that? I know that um, I know that Ebain was was primarily involved for a lot of the shader work. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Shader it's very important for our character pipeline, and Ebain is a big reason uh, of all our character shaders look that good. Um, so, shading artists in Naughty Dog basically um, we. As a character modeler, uh, we do all the modeling, texturing, and all that. But she basically take everything and kind of take all the shaders to the next level. Um, she can do like um, she have art background and she can do coding as well. So she is basically a bridge between um, us artists and the programmers. So basically communicates with programming programmers and. Uh, if I we want any features, or we have opinions, or um, about how to improve the shaders and all that, uh, we just give her feedback, and she just think of a way to make it happen. So yes, um, there's a lot of um, hard work that goes in for Ebing on especially hairs. Uh, one of it uh, we all know is basically we have a map called uh, Shadow Map. So basically, the, the reason for this shadow map is because um, in game, our shadow resolution not is not always up to the quality that we want. Uh, if we don't have high res shadow for in game hair, and the, sh the in game hair will just kind of look flat, they won't have like the shadows in between the hair cards and all that stuff. So Ebing kind of created this method uh, we call the shadow map, 
basically using Maya. Uh, so basically, all the hair cards um, that we just laid it out, like automatic layout, UV layout in Maya. Um, I don't have any example right now to show you like what the UV looks like, but it's just basically automatic UV for each hair card. And then we have a five lights um, in Maya. We have five lights under the top of the hair that we finally bake it into. So basically, um, this way, every single hair card have casting shadows on the hair cards underneath. So we call this method um, shadow hair shadow map. Um, and uh, unfortunately, this kind of method needs a lot of hand tweaking and overpaint after. But the result basically um, helped a lot um, of our hair in game. So cool. yes. No, that's Anything, great. Anything? Anyone want to add on the top of it, Colin? Nope. Okay. Cool. Uh, All right. All right, so how much texture space uh, does the hair take up in total? How many texture space, like texture yeah. resolutions? Yeah. Uh, we, for MPC, we ended up, um, Corey and Adam and Glauco knows better than this. I think it's around 512, but sometimes I think it's lower, right? Yeah, yeah, for any of the, any, anything in MP, it's uh, the role of it is as low as possible, so... <laughs> So some things get get down to like two v yeah. six where we can do it. Sometimes one twenty eight on maps. Just if you don't see how a big about, difference, then we then we optimize it. How about single player NPC? It's probably Adam? like uh, I think it jumps between five twelve and I think was there ten twenty four on the torsos for the normal map? Oh, I, I saw we were talking about hair. Oh, for the hair, right? Oh, the yeah, hair only. Yeah. Uh, I think it's five twelve to one k. It could have been higher than 512, I don't think. Unless yeah. it's like a hero. I think, I, think. 512 five, I think it was 512 for the, the the alpha and like 256 for the color map, something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. But for main character, it's 1K, basically, for uh, normal map and, and all the maps, basically. Um, there's a lot of maps that is just under 1K. It's like 512. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, great. So... um. All right, so we're going to just keep it moving, and now we'll bridge, uh, just kind of introduce some more general questions. Um, so if you guys could just list the different softwares that were utilized for the character you know, creation, the character production aspect of things. Colin Honestly. used Modbox. <laughs> oh my god. I know Jess is going to send Colin a gift basket. Or Please. Right Please. Now. It's a... As many things as possible out of this. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I was kidding, but Colin used basically everything. Yeah. He used so, Seabrush as well. So let's just list some of the, uh, the different software. So obviously, you guys are using Maya, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Maya, ZBrush, Mudbox. Uh, Max. What else? Substance Max. Design. Max. Yeah, some people are using Max. Substance Painter. Substance Painter. Sorry. That's what I meant. Pa Painter's the big one right now. <laughs> yeah. Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Uh, <laughs> what was that, Colin? What was that? I'm just kidding. No, yeah. We, we... <laughs> I was going to say, I've never heard of that software. Uh, <laughs> it might be a new one. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Uh, uh, Topo gun. Oh, even even sometimes use Mari. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God, that's true. Marvelous <laughs> designer. Yeah, Marvelous yeah, designer. Yeah. Yeah. Had a CV layout. Oh, had us. Yes. Yep. So a little bit of everything, man. Yep. Right on. Whatever and, it takes, uh, right? Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. And uh, what would you say uh, is the average poly count for each character? Mm. Well, main character or NPC? Let's go with there's both. There's a pretty big difference. Let's go with both. Like, how much are the main characters and how much is the are the NPCs? Uh, Colin, do you do you remember Sam's? I don't. Off the top of my head, I don't. But uh, you don't. It's high. I, I, yes, I don't know the exactly number, but I think that sounds like a job for Glauco. <laughs> oh yeah, Glauco. How, how much? I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I know the head. Like, just make up uh, something. Yeah. yeah, I know the head, but like everything, I think Drake. It's around. Um, 
90,000? 90, wow. Yeah, yeah, in the end. Yeah, that's drink impressive. is around 90,000 everything together. Wow. It's like 50% hair. hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's the high, that's the, well, yes, the, that's the basically lot zero, so that's a cinema, cinematic model, but whenever people play in game, when they see Drake, it's around like a third of that poly count. Yeah, it drops to the next log or two logs down or something. Yes. Yeah. Speaking of logs, how many logs do you guys have? How many LODs do you guys have per character? Depending on the characters. Yeah, um, I think Drake's only three, right, Frank? Um, no, no, no. We I think we, in the end we got four or five. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, 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 no. You're right. So if it's like zero, one, two, three, yeah, then it's kind of it's four, right? Kind of. Yeah, four, four. Yeah. So okay. zero, one, two, three. Basically. So four, four, four LODs for 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 Drake. Yeah, because he's he he's never going to too far away. Like, yeah. But other people, we have like five, six. Okay. Okay. And how long would you say it takes, you know, to create? some of these characters? If everybody could kind of say, you know, it's like the characters that they worked on, how long it took for them to create. Um, it's a hard one to say because... Uh, it is a very hard one. In production, things change a lot, and for us, we definitely had a lot of feedback and revisions and changes and stuff like that, so I mean, it, uh, for me, I know it's a bit hard to nail down that, that number because it, it felt like a pretty long time. <laughs> now, so let's let's switch it. Let's just say if you were just creating this character now, like just creating that for your own personal. You know, like I'm looking at the character right now, you know, um, Sam Drake's brother, how long would that character take you? Oh, man. Um, are we talking about a month or are we talking about two months? Yeah, I would say about two months. <laughs> two months? Okay. Would, would everybody say that's a good average time frame to create a character at the caliber you guys did for Uncharted? About two because, months? Because, well... Um, it's it's hard because we usually yeah. separated um, like all different outfits and we separate the hair, we separate the head, so all this asset like parts takes time. Yeah. So we don't really say that um, like how many times to create the whole character because we never kind of created from the beginning to the end like. Yeah, and, and you, you know, have to put it in game and then someone plays with it and come back and say, no, this needs changing, and so it's, it, I don't know, it's, it's just a hard thing for me to nail down personally, but yeah, yeah. other guys can chime in and see what they what do you think about. I think, I think for NPC it's easier uh, to have this kind of time uh, um, calculated. Uh, main character, it is, it is very hard. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like they say, go until it looks, it's, best or whatever, I don't know. It's, it's yeah, just... for example, I, I remember the two weeks before, or three weeks uh, before the game ship, I was still changing Nadine. <laughs> so, so it's like, you know, like, it's never ending. Yeah, so like two years. Two years per character. <laughs> yeah, roughly. <laughs> Until we ship the game. <laughs> exactly. It is more reality. Yeah, no, definitely. So, um... So Corey, so uh, how much freedom would you say you you know you had in terms of the you know some of the you know NPC characters on Uncharted? Um, with single player, it, it's it's pretty locked down, similar to the main characters because uh, designers are trying, you know, they they, they want to convey certain things with the characters. So those are uh, the same process. You know, you get concept, it gets approved, we make it, revisions. It's just it's a much quicker process to it being done. Like main mm -hmm. characters are like it, like almost never done. Yeah. Um, if there's something that's gonna make them better, then it gets it gets put in. Um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. For multiplayer, it was uh, pretty much do whatever I want until someone says that's too crazy, <laughs> and then yeah. we and then we'll we'll hold off on it for a little bit, and then try to get back to it. Um, yeah. But I mean, like, it, it's it's the multiplayer is the same thing. Working. Uh, I worked pretty closely with uh, Richard Lyons and. Uh, just figuring out what, what what would be cool stuff for people in multiplayer, because that's where we really get to just like do, do crazy, whatever, do, yeah, do crazy things that they don't they have no effect on the narrative of, of the single player. So that's where we get to explore a lot more things. Okay, cool, cool. Um, and you know, just 
kind of still keeping as it relates to just the time frame, um, how much research uh, went into creating some of these characters? It's like, you know, we'll start off with you, Glauco. Like, how much research on your end went into creating these characters? Uh, so pretty much we got everything, all the reference from concept art. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes we would have to uh, dive into the internet a little bit more to get a little bit more references for specific details. But they, they were always there to help us as well. So I don't think I spent a lot of time researching, yeah. at least as far as like NPCs and multiplayer characters go. But yeah, that's pretty much like a day or two or just a few hours because we got everything pretty much nailed down before we start, mm-hmm. before we get to start those. Okay, cool. And, um, and Corey, Adam, Frank, open it up to you guys as well. It's like same question. Uh, like how much research went into creating uh, the characters you guys worked on? Yeah, I think Loco nailed it. The concept team is really good for giving us enough ref- uh, reference for us. Yeah. But it was some stuff that was a little bit vague, which gave us a little bit more creativity on our side, especially for the multiplayer. But things that were more for single player that needed like a very strict um, uh, guide, we had to work super tight with the concept and like really try and finalize what they're looking for from uh, Neil Druckmann. Okay, cool. Um, and obviously, there's a lot of you know 2D design development for starting on a 3D character. Um, so there was was there any characters where you didn't have as much? Um, you know, you didn't have as much reference, uh, and it was kind of like, hey, this is a this is a, a basic artwork, but just kind of go with it. Um, well, yeah, yes, for this question. Uh, for example, um, a lot of legacy characters, um, we don't really, or at least me, I don't really have like a concept to go from the beginning. For example, um, Sully. So it's basically just the sculptor, the modelers, just, uh, it was me and taking like a pass, um, trying to kind of age it, age it properly um, and work really closely with the concept artist. Um, in this case is... Um, Ashley, and then um, working very closely with Neil Druckmann um, for the direction of uh, Sully's face. Um, so yeah, some characters, especially Lexi characters, uh, just basically um, just character artists uh, taking a pass and start from there. Uh, we do have uh, sometimes paint over from, uh, for example, I would do one pass and Neil will give feedback, and then um, if it is it is easier, um, character concept artists will just take one of the screenshot and starting paint over on the top of it, um, and then I will just take another pass after, until it gets done, finish. Okay, okay, cool. And so do you guys work uh, with, do you guys work a lot with the uh, technical animation team, like Radiant Dynamics? Um, as it relates to, you know, how you guys model, you know, your characters and some of the approach, uh, is there are there any restrictions um, as it relates to making sure everything deforms correctly and all that? How does how does that work that relationship? Um, I think. I think. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go I was ahead, like, Colin. no, yeah, um, go ahead. I think uh, our, our riggers are pretty awesome. So it for me it was you know. You can basically throw anything at them and they'll and they'll rig it. <laughs> they'll be able to get it in. But um, obviously, for any character, there are at any time specific guidelines that you have to follow. Uh, certain mesh being too close to each other and stuff like that. I know they they brought up was was <laughs> was an issue. So keeping things, you know, if we had a strap on top of you know the the shirt or something needed to levitate um, off the surface at a certain distance for for them to be able to do it. But other than that, they didn't really give us much all over meshes and, and stuff like that. Oh. They're pretty okay, cool. No, Adam, that's great. Adam, do you have anything? Because Adam basically is a half rigger in our team. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, they were really good. I think there are some early concepts, like even now as we're creating some DLC content that we, we do check with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, some stuff that's it's mostly some claw stuff and how much they can actually push uh, push with their their claw. Um, but yeah, they, they've been really good. And we have some really cool rig setups that they've created and really good skin transfer tools that make it a little bit faster. It's, it's really having a dedicated rigger team. 
Cool. Yep. Yeah, agree. Cool. Um, and so let's, you know, the level of characters, you know, you guys have created uh, for this game, in my opinion, is the best out right now, right, in terms of just quality. You guys really took that bar to a whole new level. So, mm-hmm. I mean, and, and how do you maintain consistency throughout a lot of these characters? Is there, you know, you guys sharing assets? Um, like, what's what's that process like? How do you guys maintain that consistency, you know, at the same level and making sure they all belong and fit in the same world? Yeah. Um, I can I can answer the first part of this. So yeah, definitely. I, um, I mentioned a while back that uh, uh, one of the things that really helped was Yibing and the shader process in general because it you know we had we had the shaders pre-made so stuff like cloth and um, you know different types of fabric and leather and all these things so you know once we once we had the model putting those those shaders on keep things consistent just in their nature. Um, so it was, it was pretty easy in that sense to, you know, just put the shader on, tell it what fabric to be, and we would all get a similar result in-game. Um, it doesn't matter if it was in, um, single player or multiplayer. Um, you kind of got this similar result uh, depending on, yeah, the shaders and stuff that you put on. So that, that was one of it. Um, cool. The other one I can, um, I can say is uh, for... I can say this for main characters. Um, basically, how we keep everything uh, consistent for main characters, whenever we're doing something, for example, um, Drake is the first being done as the main character, and then um, Drake's brother, and then I think Nadine Elena was done about the same time, but whenever the character art is taking the pass or are doing one main character, we always... In the end, we always compare them together side by side, just like ahead. Um, so we making sure in this way, um, basically keeping the consistency of the, how the character looks. Uh, do they look uh, belong to like the same in the same game? Um, and everyone contribute to this because whenever we have like we call, I call this like char- main character lineup. And everyone will just come to my desk, and I will basically ask everyone, oh, what do you think of, about Nadine? What do you think about Rafe? What do you think about uh, Sully? Uh, is, Ed, is, Ed, is there anyone jumping out that kind of don't belong into the game? We ask this kind of question a lot uh, during the process of creating these main characters. Yep, yep, that's true. <laughs> cool. And, and are you guys sharing, you know, like, you know, uh, common assets amongst, you know, the different well, characters? Well, we, we definitely share techniques, and, you know, if, if one guy figured out something, they'll share pretty good usually about sharing amongst each other and stuff like that, so. Okay. Uh, well, the, the head mesh is basically head and arms and legs. Basically, it's all the same. All right. So all we use this. Are. So it's the same UV. Um for the head, is the most important thing because then we can transfer uh, all the blend shapes, uh, sometimes using the same wrinkle maps and all that, um, and detail maps as well. So there's a lot of benefit using um, the same head typology for the entire game. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, and, and, and kind of just touching upon the hair uh, again, um, I don't know if we answered this, but were you using uh, flow maps uh, for the hair, Frank? What map? Flow maps? Um, I don't think we have flow maps for the hair. We had, okay. sorry, we had we have something that was kind of similar. It's, it's a per strand ID map, which gave it a, a like a shift of the specular uh, per strand, and that was that was based on like an up to down in the tip sheet. So all of our hair had a um, BUV the same way to allow that that direction of that flow. So that was. That was the limit of that. We didn't actually have like a full-on flow map. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. And um, so bringing all these characters together, let's talk about you know um, some of the some of the tools or some of the workflow uh, you guys implemented for this. Um, so for creating these, yeah, I know we mentioned that you guys utilize you know um, you know some scanning. Uh, what was the workflow for that like? Frank. Right. Frank or Adam? Uh, no, Adam. Adam, go ahead. All right. Uh, so, 
normally try and find someone. We, we had an in-house scanner. Um, it, was, it was kind of the size of like a clothing iron. And we had a small little room where we, we can bring people in, uh, scan them. So mostly it was done for uh, clothing. We have a lot of like just real world clothing that we they had in the game, and so we looked around the studio trying to find something similar. If not, we had we had someone uh, like a costume designer who's who grab grab all the clothing for us based off the cons that were done up, and try and match that, and then we bring that in there and we scan it. Um, so we have a little turntable that we we picked up, and the scanner gets it as like a pretty rough uh, high poly. It's, al it's almost like a like a rough high poly sculpt that you would see in Z that we, we have as an OBJ. And then um, we bring that into ZBrush, we clean it up to make sure that it, it lines up properly, uh, line, line that up with our, our base mesh, which is normally uh, like Drake's proportions, and then uh, trim trim off uh, like the extra bits. If you're just doing, uh, say if you're doing like a jacket, we, we trim off the hands, trim off the, the neck and the legs. And then from that torso, uh, we, uh, retopo that thing, and then we also do a refinement pass on the the high poly because we don't we, we lose a lot of details doing the scan, and then project that back on, and then just kind of uh, work from there. Okay, cool, cool. And and this was for both faces as well as clothing. Uh, the face not so yeah, much. Great. Yeah, uh, basically it's for the clothing. Um, face we try not to use photo scans for main characters uh, or. Uh, actor facial scans for the main characters because uh, we, we always want to keep that uh, artistic feelings uh, for the sculpting uh, of our main character. So, but mainly we're doing this for um, the closing pipeline that we have. Okay. okay. There's, a, there's one NPC that I scanned here. Um, this is a guy in our studio, Icky. <laughs> Icky. So you get this. <laughs> to get this guy in the game, um, super fortunate they had no hair. It makes it so much easier to scan. Uh, so oh, yeah, exactly. The process. Normally, people do want to get scans. It's kind of fun being in the game. And so we, I had him in there. We scanned him in the morning. Um, then we lined up the the high poly sculpt to the the base mesh. So we had to line up the eyes, uh, the rest of the shape. Of any hairs, if we're doing any hair swaps, and then uh, the low poly, we just project the high res sculpt onto our low poly base mesh, which was uh, Drake's low poly, which is the first subdivision in ZBrush, and then we can slap on some basic pictures, and then throw them in the game. So I, I had like a little prototype of Icky running around in the auction um, <laughs> by the <end> that day. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. That was awesome. Cool. Yeah. So, you know, talking about scan, you know, scanning just tech in general, obviously scanning is becoming more and more prevalent in our industry, and there is a lot of questions, you know, as it relates to that. So with the rise of photogrammetry and 3D scan scanning, how do you guys see the role of, you know, a character artist, um, you know, evolving over time? And this is a question that I would, I would you know, ask the team. Um, we could just start off with uh, Glauco. Yep. Uh, I don't think it's going to change a lot. I think it speed up the process, but like having the ability to scope the head from scratch is essential to understand the forms and also like tweak the forms. So I just see like a faster way to achieve good results, but I don't think it's going to substitute or take away all the character artist's role. And I think it also helps a lot to have a scan and to kind of understand the forms to study. So I, I think it's just it's adding. It's it's not like taking taking away. Yeah. Cool. I think it's just making our uh, workflow a bit faster. And if we have a photo scan, basically give us like a really good base. We see it that way. Uh, a really good way base to start with. So it's just basically faster our processing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Completely agree, Corey. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's scanning's been. Um, just amazing. Uh, the amount of content we can produce because of it is uh, quite incredible. Uh, and then, cool. and then, uh, with, with that, uh, sometimes there are things you just can't scan, like really shiny things. Just they won't scan well. So uh, that's like there's, hair, there, 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 letter, all that yeah. stuff. It's really hard to scan. Yeah, and that's where like Marvelous will come in, and we can do stuff in there. And yeah, cool. 
And Colin, do you agree? Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think if we didn't have Scannon, we'd we'd be we'd be there a lot later. So I don't think we can finish our project without Scanning. Yeah, <laughs> it's one of those it's one of those production things where it's like you got to separate being a you know as I mentioned like being an artist and uh, a production artist and while you're there using scans definitely speed things up a lot um, to get a whole cast of characters and you know single player multiplayer and all these different you know NPCs and stuff like that created so if everyone were to sculpt that by hand it would either take a lot of people or a lot of time so yeah no definitely exactly yeah so mm -hmm. and, and talking about you know just um, some of the some of the tools you guys utilize in your, in, in your arsenal uh, to create these amazing characters uh, Corey, could you talk a little bit about um, how Marvelous was involved in that process as well? I know it was very limited, but if you could talk on that. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's definitely there's things like uh, like scars and stuff like that. Like it's a, basically just a rectangle that's twisted around a bunch and all that. Trying to scan that and then clean it up is pretty annoying. So we definitely use Marvelous for that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it it really just comes down to, like, anything we couldn't scan, try to do it in Marvelous first. If not that, then we just start it from scratch. Um, yeah, yep. but it, 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 it's an amazing tool. I mean, it's a little weird feeling like you're a seamstress, but, you know, whatever. If that's what it takes <laughs> to get stuff done, then that's fine. <laughs> and if this 3D thing doesn't work out long term, you know you have another career option. <laughs> yeah, the, the only problem is, I, the, the, like, the, the, way, the way I end up using Marvelous, I try to be in there as little as possible, so yeah. I'll, I'll get a somewhat good result and then throw it in ZBrush and fix the fix whatever's wrong much faster than if I stayed in Marvelous and, like, noodled around and tried to get yeah. things to line up perfect. Like, there's, there's, no, there's no reason to, like, waste your time doing that when you, if you can just throw it in ZBrush, fix it in five minutes and move forward. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, nope, it makes sense. And, and 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 Colin, it's like you know, I know, um, you know, uh, you're obviously it's like you know, pretty huge when it comes to you know, marvelous designer. Um, yeah. Tries and folds. It's like you know, um, any any comment on that? Um, I know we we did we did a lot of stuff with it early on, uh, with regards to Drake initial um clothing. Like I, it was something that I was trying to prototype and use uh for the rest of the game, you know, overall. But we ended up just needed to go in production, just make stuff, and, and so the scanning came in, and we just ended up going with that because it was much faster, just, again, just get stuff in. Um, yeah. We didn't have, like, anything, any library pre-made ahead of time or anything with regard to Marvelous stuff, so it wasn't it wasn't beneficial at the time for production, so it was much faster to just use scans, and, and again, if you needed something that couldn't be made regularly, um, then that's when we would use it, but, uh, or couldn't, couldn't be scanned, I should say, but, um, yeah. But cool. um, I, I just used it initially on on Drake's initial outfit. Yeah. So. And how were you guys adding wrinkles uh, to you know? Because if you were scanning these, you know, um, a lot of these these this cloth, you know, you, um, you had predefined wrinkles in there. It's like were you guys going in and smoothing those out and then adding, you know, wrinkles oh, to the different. Oh, so for the wrinkles, basically before before we scan, we hand tweak the wrinkle to be exactly what we wanted. That's the that's the one of the very important part. Before we scan, we always tweak hand tweak the wrinkles. Uh, we pay attention to where we don't want the wrinkles and where we do want the wrinkles and all that stuff. Okay, okay, yeah. that makes complete then, sense. And I know but we, we still we still need to tweak after, depending on our sometimes our direction will be different. Sometimes ended up the scan when we put it in game, um, it doesn't look as Good as we think, then we need to hand tweak it after. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. No. I think uh, adding on that one, I think it also if it depends on if the character has a full map blend for the wrinkle pattern. If it's just an NPC character, you want a you want a natural looking wrinkle on the on the entire back. But if it's a, a main character, you want something that's able to blend around a little bit. Just something that works for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you guys weren't using you know, any of the simulations within Marvelous uh, for key poses or anything, and then kind of baking that out. That wasn't a part of the workflow, correct? No, no. that wasn't. Okay. It okay. probably would have been if we weren't using the scanner as much, if we relied yeah. on Marvelous. Yeah. Okay. And, and so if we keep every every outfit as the same UV, that would be very beneficial, but we yeah. didn't. Okay. 
Um, and we're talking about all the scanning and stuff. Um, Glauco, uh, would you recommend an aspiring artist learn how to work with scans in order to, you know, to get a job, in, in, you know, in, in, as a character artist? Or uh, I would definitely recommend getting a scan and just playing around, but make sure you can sculpt things by hand as well, because yeah. like cleaning up scans is way easier than sculpting like fold from scratch. So. Well, for studying purpose, I would keep myself studying wrinkles from scratch, and then when you get the chance, when you have to do the work, you can do that faster and like easier. So, but it's definitely a good thing to get a scan and to see how the folds react and stuff. Okay. Uh, cool. No, that's great. And so, let's talk about just you know we're talking about scanning. You know. I have on one thing to add to that, sorry. Oh, please, please, go ahead, Frank. Okay, so basically what I think is, well, I don't think people need to focus on basically to get every wrinkle photorealistic, but mm -hmm. you still need to be able to sculpt uh, your own wrinkles. For example, I have, uh, if people can see my screen over here, yep. I have um, for this, let's see... This, all right. So this is like a, a scan uh, of Nadine's outfit mm -hmm. that we did it in one day, basically. But looking at this, uh, like pants, just look at the pants. Uh, in the end, the pants look like this, all right. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of hand sculpting after, uh, based on the tweaking of the direction of the art, which is uh, Neil, how how Neil wants. Um, and uh, there's a lot of tweaking after. So the art, I think I think the character artists need to be able to sculpting the wrinkles, um, but I don't think it needs to be like all photorealistic. Uh, just spend like one or two months to study wrinkles. I don't I don't think you need to do that, but still need to be understand the wrinkle flows and how to sculpt the wrinkles. No, and I and I completely agree and. And the question I was going to ask kind of ties in with that, um, you know, the uncanny valley, right? Like, how do you guys, because you got, the, the, you know, and I've had this conversation with a lot of people, and there's a lot of questions about how realistic the characters look. I actually don't think the characters look realistic necessarily, right? It's like, you know, you guys have, there's, it's still art, it's still pushed artistically. It's like, you know, and there's still a design to it. How do you guys work with that? You know, how do you guys kind of balance that? You know, from it not looking creepy, right? Um, Colin, how do you avoid you wanna... the uncanny valley with what you guys created? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, so one of the one of the things I know that we did was um, obviously, you know, once we have the concept art, I think it's it's usually I don't think. Uncharted stuff is, is very photo real. Um, I think we have sh photo real shaders and and stuff like that. But in in general, the sculpts are, are pretty stylized to a certain degree. So I making, totally agree. Yeah, making sure they um, have certain shapes chiseled in um, and not too smooth to give it that like I don't know scan feel or something. You know what I mean? Like it's uh, um, yeah. I just think it's for me. It's just <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to explain. But for me, it's it's just chiseling in the character in there um, yeah. based off concept and, and reference and stuff like that and pull in certain things from different people and you know um, it's also aesthetic that I think it's putting some shapes that you find cool or try I don't know how to how to best, best explain that but it's 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 like shapes that you think is cool I don't know you know it's and it's not you know stuff like on the on the nose bridge you know being able to uh, Make it look like it's broken, or certain certain things that you when you put it in, it almost like it feels sculpted as opposed to being um, uh, something derived from a scan or something. You know what I mean? Like it, it, yeah. it has some characteristic to it. I think. No, I think I think uh, I think that makes complete sense. And and speaking of of you know um, of kind of just you know adding some of these details, it's like could you explain the process of aging uh, this character because you did such a great job. You know, it's like can take him from like you know a young teenager to a much older middle age you know um, man. So could you talk a little bit about that process? Any anything that you discovered along the way? Yeah, sure. Um, 
I mean, uh, a lot of feedback from people, obviously, but it was definitely putting them beside each other and trying to, yeah, see what I can take from one character, from one version to the other. So, for example, um, I know I shared stuff like the texture map between the older Sam and the younger Sam, but I would take out some of the, the um, you know, the, the things that you would see in an older person. So I would take out some of the, you know, pores and uh, deeper pores and, and even in the normal map. The wrinkles, yeah, in the normal map you can tell like the, the wrinkles here. They're hinted at, but they're not as strong and prominent as this one. Um, doing a blend shape between the young, the very young version and the older version to get a midpoint for the for the uh, mid, middle age version, and then working on top of that, or um, that really helped for sure. So sharing textures, stuff like the eyes, you know, um, eyebrows, and uh, certain facial features and stuff like that really helped to pinpoint get the aging to look. Um, to look as if it's the same character. Yeah. Um, that was the process for like all the aging that we did on even Young Drake as well and, and stuff like that. Cool. And um, what's what's your process for, for creating some of the textures? Um, could you talk a little bit about that, Glauco, and we'll kind of go down the line for everybody else. But what's what's your process? I know you guys have a couple of different softwares you guys utilize. It's kind of open. You've mentioned Mari. You mentioned Substance. You mentioned just Photoshop. So... Yeah, I think everyone has their own way of doing head textures, but definitely for for the clothing and all the accessories, by the end of the project, pretty much all of us were using Substance Painter yep. because it was super easy to reuse stuff and also like to create textures. Uh, and my way of doing head textures was pretty much straightforward in, in Mudbox and also a little bit of Substance Painter. Yep. Cool. So so you use a, a Substance quite a bit in, in your workflow. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I do use a lot of Substance. Cool, cool. Uh, Frank? Yo. What's kind of your workflow when it comes to, to texturing some of these well, characters? Well, okay, so I in, in the end, I was using Substance. Um, this guy's made me to. <laughs> especially, yes. okay, especially um, Glauco and Adam. <laughs> These two guys keep pushing substance painters to the whole team. Because <laughs> one thing that I don't really want to do is changing our the main pipeline that we have for our workflow, character workflow, during the game. Um, I think it will be hard for people to learning the new software in between, especially doing the crunch. So I didn't force anyone to, like, so we have to do this. But uh, I did try that out, and after I used uh, that, I just keep using that after, because it really makes our workflow way faster. Um, there's a lot of stuff. If we layered it good, uh, we can reuse all the layers right after. Mm -hmm. um, those are all the, the team teach me that, so... Um, credits for them. Right yeah. on. I know we had a lot of like masks, dirt, dirt masks, and and mud and stuff like that that we'd start out with and share amongst each other and stuff like oh, that. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Good point, Colin. Yeah. Cool. Um, and and Corey, Adam. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, paint it, substance painter is absolutely amazing. So if you're not using it for characters, um, I highly recommend getting it. Um. Designer is good, but it's a lot more technical because it's node-based. Um, but yeah, I mean, those those programs are amazing. And it, yeah, like like I was saying, by the end of the project, we could it got to the point where you like throw a character in, do like five steps, and then you like there you go, move on. <laughs> so yeah, exactly, it's great. Yeah, well, Peter made texturing such a small part of uh, the whole the whole process now. Like it's it's pretty much just based off your high res sculpt and then make sure you get a nice low poly with UVs and then your your texturing is just so fast now in Painter. So yeah. like with the uh, our color textures are actually pretty flat because we have uh, like physically based shaders right now. And so we have an AO map that is separate and then we do we're starting to do some edge wear and stuff depending on what kind of asset it is. But um, I use it for a lot of like just noise break up like for the the skin on Hector here. There's just a lot of different layers with different procedurals just um, getting a nice break up in the skin mm -hmm. and then just hand painting areas that were, like where I need it for around the eyes and all that and the lips. Yeah. Okay, cool. 
And and I know there's I know the answer to this, but I just want you know everybody to to, to I won't want you guys to answer it, which is uh, there's a few people asking are there are they are you guys using uh, photo sourcing for the textures? Uh, not that I'm. Um, nope. I don't no, think so. I don't, I don't think, think so. Yeah. <laughs> I know you guys pride yourselves on you know uh, hand painting a lot. You know a, a, most of your textures. So yeah. um, as it relates to a lot of the face work. So. Yeah, I mean, like the the important thing with if you if you're using a photo texture, you're most likely fighting against all the hard work you did in your sculpt. So it doesn't. It's better to bring out like accentuate what you did in the high res than if you had like. A photo of skin pores on top of skin, like it, it, it's not going to line up with what you got, and yeah. it can lead to a lot of problems. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody, would, everybody would, would agree on that, that. I think that yes, I think that adds to to the I don't know the look that you see in the final thing, right? Like it makes it not seem so photo real to the point where it's uncanny, um, you know, uh, and it gives some kind of art, or I don't know how to best explain, it, but it gives some kind of um, artist input into what this looks like, yeah. I think that's probably what contributes to the overall look of, of the game being so amazing, but at the same yeah. time not looking photorealistic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so just let everyone know that there's one trick that we did uh, in the color map to do skin pore detail. Basically, we have our um, high poly sculpting ZBrush, and we will bake out uh, the normal map, uh, and then convert it into like a high map, um, and then kind of overlay uh, on the top of our um, color map to kind of getting that and and color it after, so kind of getting that skin pore detail on the top of um, our head texture color, and in that way, all the high poly, uh, all the skin pore will kind of match exactly of your high poly sculpting. Very yeah. lightly, though. Very lightly. Cool. So um, we're getting towards the end of the session, and we're going to shift it now to, you know, questions, you know, about aspiring artists, right? So um, so the first question is, what's your opinion on the perception of that you should work as an environment artist before uh, working as a character artist? Or, or get a start as an environment or prop artist, you know, um, and then slowly move into characters? Um. And this can be, I guess, everyone can take a jab at this, but mm -hmm. uh, I think, I think for me personally, if you want to be a character artist, I would say just go for being a character artist and work as hard as possible and try try to do that. Sure, I think it's possible to break in from other in, um, fields as well, but I mean, if you're doing environment stuff mostly, you're probably not going to be doing a lot of character stuff. And if you focus on one, you can, you know, uh, you would get more out of doing that than trying to do both, I guess. I don't know. But, I mean, I've, I guess it's been done before that people have jumped ship. Like, yeah. Okay. Um, can I share something? Please. Uh, I don't know if this guy knows that, but uh, I am one of example. Uh, when I got hired in Sony San Diego, uh, the first project that I work on in Sony San Diego is it's called Puppeteer. And I was hired as an environment artist, mm. like doing props and all that. How dare you? Um, traitor. Traitor. Well, <laughs> it is because, okay, so Sony San Diego is kind of a big outsourcing company. Um, and so their project, they, they got project, it's project by project. So at that time, it's either I will wait for the next project, which has character for me to work on, or I just jump in first. Uh, starting from whatever project they throw me on. So I choose just go into the company first. Whatever they throw at me, I will just finish. But to me, if you can do character, in my opinion, you can definitely do props or anything else. Yeah, I, I, would, I would have to agree. Does everybody uh, echo that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I agree with that. But it depends also on the reality that you're living. So, for example, myself, I started like around 10 years ago. And that time, in Brazil, there was like no video game big companies. It's still there isn't. But I had to start working. And then I started working for doing advertising. And pretty much everything that I was doing was props and environments and that kind of stuff. But I was also studying characters on the side and like on my and all my free time. So. Yeah. 
it, it's I totally of course agree, it's yes. better if you if you want to do characters, just focus on doing characters. Maybe you cannot do that for a living right now, but yeah. maybe you, you still have to do something for a living. So just do whatever you want, and then you can also keep pushing yourself until you get the, that gig. Yeah, I agree with that too. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and and if there is somewhere you want to work, look at their games and make some stuff like what they have, right? Because in the end, that's who they want is people who can yes. do exactly. what they do. That's very Talking important. Talking your goal for for your career that's a very yeah. important step. Yeah. I completely I completely agree. Um, uh, exactly. And and does Naughty Dog still uh, do tests? Like they still require a lot of their artists, mm -hmm. you know, applying to do yeah, tests. We do. I, everyone I think, needs to take a test. I think yeah, I think it's everyone. Like everyone. No matter, everyone. everyone. No matter how famous you are, you need to take the <laughs> test. Yeah. Right on. Um, so we have a question uh, for Glauco, and, and and I know Glauco, you mentioned, you know, um, how you, you know your early transition into working as a character artist, but um, this is uh, from one of your Brazilian um, countrymen, um, Eduardo, who's asking, uh, how do you make that shift? Um, you know, right now he's currently working as a product designer, but he wants to transition to the game industry. Um, is there any tips, you know, you have uh, for how to transition in, in working in an American uh, industry or American game industry? I think the, yeah, I think the big thing to come to America is the visa. And that's the, well, that, there's like the trickiest part for us that work abroad or live abroad. And it really comes down to a company wants to hire you because they like your stuff and because they need you. So I would say you got to focus on keep building up your portfolio and making sure you, you are developing your skills and matching like what the company needs and just keep applying and keep like the space up there's not much you can do uh, after that right you just like gotta keep believing that you can do it and keep pushing because you cannot come here even for work for free you cannot come just to learn you, you have to be under a visa and there are like basically two types of visa and both of them requires a company to sponsor you so it's tricky but it's not impossible Okay, cool. Um, should should some one's portfolio show the ability to create different styles, or do you think realism is the focal point and and you know just showing that on your demo reel? Um, With that, depending on the character, the, the 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 company that you want to apply, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think personally, in a portfolio, me personally, I would I would like to see a range of styles. Much, Mostly because you never know when in production something you know they'll throw something at you. I mean, more for more, more likely they'll they're already set in a certain style for any given game. But it's for as an artist, I think it's it's beneficial because it keeps you versatile. You know what I mean? And being able to do anything is is something I I I'm all about. So I, you know, I would like to see that. I don't know. Okay. If, if we're high, think, it's Corey for a certain Adam, job. If we're high, uh, yeah. Oh, he, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely have a few pieces that are geared towards the company, but um, you, you know, do the stuff you love. Like, yeah. it, it if it's really cool looking, it's really cool look, cool looking, regardless of style. Um, so, like, when we hired on some contractors, um, it wasn't necessarily like the styles fit one to one, but it's mm -hmm. like, oh, they made good art. That yeah. that's that's that that's the most important thing, right? Like you're only as strong as your 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 weakest piece, so yeah. No, nope, I completely agree. And Adam, it seems like you had something to say, or yeah, yeah, I agree with these guys. Um, yeah, normally your portfolio would consist of things that you enjoy working on in your free time, yep. or it's something that you're trying to do for a living. So it's it should be your passion of what you're creating. It is it is good to show a range, and if a range is important to you, then it shows us that's what you want to do for a career too. Yeah. So, I completely agree. Yeah, if you if you want to do more stylized things, then you make more stylized things because you enjoy doing that, and that's what kind of job you'll get. Yeah, yeah I completely agree. And one question we've been having, you know, um, pop up, which is, and this is obviously a testament to just how amazing all of you guys are. But what do you guys do um, to just improve? Is there any particular exercises that an inspiring character artist can do to improve his or her level? You know. Yeah. Lots and lots of um, weightlifting, and uh, make sure you get the 
<laughs> yes. Push ups. <laughs> Fingers. Yes. Finger push ups specifically, not just regular push ups. The bigger the biceps, the better the art. Look at Glauco. Look at this. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how we roll, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so you, you, you uh, heard it here first from the character arts team. It's a lot of push-ups. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. official. No uh, squats and pull-ups, dude. Don't forget the squats. <laughs> don't don't, don't, don't have legs, legs, man. Don't forget legs. Gotta don't have that back support. So go ahead, Colin. Got to have that back support for when you're sitting down for eight hours, ten hours. <laughs> 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 but uh, no, for, uh, for real, I, I mean, again, it goes back to just doing what you love, man. Uh, if if you really love it, you would do it, you know, after hours, and you know, no one has to like tell you to to um, to do it, sort of thing. So you'd always go out and seek information, new information, new new how to get better, and practice, practice, and you know, stuff like that. So yeah, practice is definitely the main point for me. Um, you know. Like whenever I have time, just keep practicing. Yeah, I think we all um, do personal stuff. And really yes, show. yeah. And I think in our industry, it's especially like character artists because there's so many advanced or new technology. Um, we definitely need to stay on the top of everything. Um, keep accepting like new technology, new software, new ways to do things. You know, uh, keep learning. Cool, Glauco. Yeah, I agree with these guys. For me, I love doing traditional art too, like traditional sculpting. I think that adds a lot to my work. But yeah, it all comes to practicing and doing what you like, find ways to keep improving, either studying software, new technology, or keep pushing and developing your art skills. Yep. Cool. Corey? Yeah, I mean, it. it I mean, I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this on top of what everyone else is saying, like, don't keep doing something if it's like not your favorite thing to make just because you're trying to improve like leave time for fun stuff like you're an artist like enjoy things that 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 helps so much when you enjoy what you're working on you're going to you're going to go further with it yep. and instead of looking for the all right how do i how do i finish this practice as fast as possible so i can move on to something i enjoy mhm mm no, I completely agree. And Adam, I think we got your take on it as well, right? Uh, yeah, it's just it's just doing uh, things that you love in your free time that are related. So, like fan art of video games that you happen to play, that, like things like that. I think it's just keep practicing. Cool. Or fan art of the TV shows that you like to watch. Yeah, yeah. like Naruto <laughs> and Bleach. Like Bleach. <laughs> That's enemy, yes. <laughs> Bloodborne sculpt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> right on. Um, so last question um, before we sign off. Um, so what, what do you guys think, uh, and this is one of those awkward questions, which I know it's, uh, what do you guys think contributed to the the quality of art you guys created in this game. Oh man. What? What? That's what made that's these that's characters so badass? I'll go. It's it's such a range of things. I mean, it's it's so hard to pinpoint any one particular thing, from lighting to shading to the texture into every like it's so many. Um, it's teamwork. Yeah, it's yep. teamwork. Yep. Yeah. Sure, the an the the riggers and the animators. I mean, it's insane. It uh, is every, teamwork. Everyone trying to make yeah. sure the field is like pushed to the limit, sort of deal. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is to me. It is really amazing to work with all these guys. Uh, when I said all these guys, I, I didn't mean like our character team is like the whole studio. When the whole studio is crunching, but not a lot of people is complaining because everyone is doing what they love and is pushing their limit to try to make the game to the next level. Um, to me, that feeling is amazing, and it's because of this kind of attitude. Uh, to me, that Naughty Dog um, is one of the greatest company, and we make great games just because of this. And I have to say, and on on that note, I would agree with you a thousand percent. The stuff that you guys created for this game is hands down, as as a character artist myself, is inspiring. 
Um, you guys are, you know, constantly raising that bar. Now I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do a lot more push-ups and pull-ups, <laughs> yes. and sit-ups, and you know. Um, hey, don't forget so, the squats. Don't forget the leg day. Yeah, that's important. Leg day. Yeah, <laughs> don't forget leg day. Yeah, don't <laughs> skip many, the leg day. How many, how many push-ups exactly do they need to do? I think there's a number, right? Yeah, there's a number, right, Glauco? A number? Yeah. Usually, 53 is a good starting point. <laughs> okay. So before applying, just make sure you can. Do 53 straight, like yes, no rest. Like Jay Hoon. Like Jay Hoon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he, he did like 20. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Dude, it's a secret, man. In the interview process, we just ask you to do push ups. That's pretty much what we do in the interview, so. Yeah, yeah that's it. That's the whole interview. It just consists of push ups yeah. and pull ups. Yeah. So with, with no bar. With, with no, no bar. No bar, <laughs> yeah. Flying pull ups. <laughs> That's all we call. Exactly. Have to sculpt one, three D print it, and then use it. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much from from myself and everybody, all two thousand one hundred people that sign up for the session. Um, we just thank you so much for just an amazing time. Uh, thank you for just your art. Thank you for your passion and what you guys do. Constantly inspiring, you know, not just inspiring, you know, not just up and coming artists, but just the industry as a whole. Uh, thank you for your time, and uh, have an amazing weekend. Frank, thank you for staying up uh, so yes. late. 4 now, early. yes. I don't <laughs> need to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but thank you guys so much. Uh, it's uh, Adam, Corey, Colin, Glauco, Frank, uh, and, and, and the guys who are not able to make it, uh, thank you. Thanks for everything, Manny. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, yeah. Manny. Thank you, thank you all for listening. Yeah. Uh, thanks, guys. Have a great yeah, weekend, guys. Cool. Go do some good art. <laughs> go do some good art. <laughs> yeah. Go do some push-ups. Oh, sorry. Good art. <laughs> <laughs> 20, 23. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll do a virtual push-up competition. Right on. How are doing, guys? You guys have a great one. Frank, thank you so much, brother. No problem. We'll talk to you later, man. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. 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 Later, later, guys. Later. Oh, that was amazing. Um, all right. So uh, just for some of you guys who are still on board, um, we're going to be doing another session uh, next week. Uh, this time it's going to be uh, environment. Um, it's going to be an environment uh, substance uh, substance designer and and, and shader using uh, for environments uh, for games. Uh, we're still working on the title, as you can tell. So <laughs> so that's something that we're going to be working. Uh, that's a session that we're going to be doing next week. Um, we'll send out all the information for that. Um, hopefully Monday if not Tuesday at the latest. I know a lot of you guys requested more environment, uh, you know, classes or not classes, but more environment sessions. So we're going to be doing that. Um, the the uh, the surveys, not the surveys, but some of the stuff that we send out um, early on when you when you subscribe, definitely fill those out just to kind of let us know what you know what sessions you guys are interested in. Um, we want to try to continue doing these um, more frequently. Um, so once again, definitely let us know what you guys uh, what you guys are interested in. Um, Alexander, you want to do you want me to do a video uh, doing push-ups? Uh, I don't know, dude. Maybe six months ago before the baby, I would have been able to do that. But right now, I don't think I'll be able to do more than two. So, <laughs> um, and 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 guys, and, and thank you so much. Uh, um, I'm trying, Tim. I'm trying. It's uh, it's it's a lot of fun just kind of interviewing you know these guys and and making sure you guys get you know get a better insight in terms of what people are looking for. Um, so, but once again, thank you so much for just your patience through this process. I'm still kind of getting the use of of all of this, uh, but it's uh it's been a lot of fun and it's obviously great that you guys enjoy it and appreciate it. And I know the guys are all offline now, but um, it's amazing to have people like that want to contribute their time. Frank wasn't joking. It was 4.30 in the morning, you know, because he's in Taiwan. So it's 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 amazing that guy, you know, that guy was able to do that. Um, it's uh, so, but as I said, it just goes to show you how much they really care about 
you know, just the industry and, and kind of getting getting that information out there. So, but anyway, guys, I got to get back to work. Got to pay the bills. Uh, once again, thank you so much uh, for those of you guys who were uh, in different parts of the world, you know, have at it if it's the weekend. For everybody in the States, uh, have a great weekend, and I'll see you guys next week. Same time and same place, I think. Take care, boys. Later.